Hi everyone, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I am back uh, with another Christmas themed junk journal folio. I'm making this with a really pretty paper kit by Cartabella. This one's called A Wonderful Christmas, and I just love it. Uh, there's of course all the stickers and the little cards and the beautiful patterned papers. So let me show you how this one opens up. It opens this way and then this page opens and we have two pockets here. And then this flap opens and we've got a side tuck here. And then on this flap, we have a large side tuck. I love all these plaids and the colors are just beautiful. And then it flips down and we've got another pocket here and a side load here. So a little bit different configuration of pockets. I like how it is laid out. I hope you do. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make it. So the finished folio itself is a fun size too. It measures seven by seven. So a seven inch square, which is a little different and ties here on the left hand side. Again, just trying to be a little different. I'm gonna sit it there because we may have to refer back to it. I will have all of the measurements for you, the paper that you need and where to score and everything in the description. But um, this, I've only made it once. I <laughs> created it as I was folding paper and making it. So hopefully we won't get confused and I can give you all your measurements, but double check in the description. So you need approximately three full pieces of 12 by 12 paper. You will have some left over, and then you might want some of the elements, right? Um, if you don't have a scrapbook kit, you know, some ephemera, some journaling cards, make some tags, things like that. I also used a few of the stickers from the pack. So, you know, use what you have and it will work. So the main base of the folio was made with two pieces of paper, isn't that plaid so fun, that measure seven by 12, okay? So we're gonna start with those two. I'm gonna set these aside and I'll give you the other measurements as we go. And you do kinda wanna sit and look at your paper and decide what you want your front flap to be. Like if I'm gonna do these Santas again, or if I'm gonna do this plaid, you know, you just kinda have to think about it. I could do the pretty snowflakes. So look at your paper. I'm just, I'm just gonna have to decide, and it's sort of hard, or it is for me anyway, when I'm first working with a new design, to really think through what everything you know, where everything is going to be. I also have, from where I cut the other sides, I needed a piece that's the right size with these pretty flowers. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking I may set the snowflakes aside and use the flowers, the Santas, the plaids. So, because I have Santas on the front of the other one, I'm gonna do the plaid on the front. I just, that's screaming my name. So, we are gonna wanna score these two pieces, again, that measure 12 inches by seven inches at seven inches. And so, I am going to score it just on both sides. This is, on, of course, on that 12 inch side. And hopefully my paper won't crack. And this is going to be that front flap cover, okay? And then you are going to take your next piece, and this one doesn't have any direction to it, so it's not a big deal. It's also scored at seven. It, it doesn't matter as much how I lay it in here because we can flip it around and make the patterns of the paper work the way we want them to. So this Cartabella paper, if you've ever worked with it, is nice and thick. And so I do make sure, if I can grab mine, to use my bone folder and get nice creases because it is pretty thick. And if you just sort of fold it over this way, you know, which works, it, it doesn't lay 
quite lay flat, so I'm really going to push mine down and really get a good crease. Okay. We're going to have some choices to make here, too, about if I want the, the plaid and the floral or if I want... I think I do want the plaid, or if I wanted this burgundy with the little X's. I think we're gonna do it this way. So this is what mine's going to look like. It's going to open up initially here and here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna glue this piece and this piece together. Now, later I am going to do some corner rounding. I didn't round everything. I left these corners, but then the flaps, I did some corner rounding on. So if you, you know, you can round yours now. If you know you're going to want to round the whole thing, if you don't have a really heavy duty corner rounder, you may want to do it before you glue together. I am going to pick out my art glitter glue today instead of my regular go to glue simply because this is a very, again, I love this paper feels beautiful but I want it it's a little porous and it just seems like I need a little bit quicker grab on camera so I'm going to add the glue here and I'll show you the if you're not familiar you know if you're newer to to this kind of crafting I'll show you the art glitter glue and then kind of my normal everyday glue that I use that I like to put in these little bottles to make it easy to squeeze out. The art glitter glue, you do have to work a little quickly because it does dry quicker than the normal Line Co. PVA glue that I use, that I usually use for my everyday purpose. <laughs> okay, so if you are wanting to see the glue, this is the art glitter glue that I'm using today. But I normally, even on camera, will craft with this glue. This is a little less expensive, but I love it, and it does a great job. If you are interested in any of the supplies I use, check out my Amazon storefront. It's an affiliate link. Amazon will pay me a few pennies. No cost to you if you make a purchase. So if you are interested in that, please go take a look. Now, occasionally this happens. I've shown you guys this before. If you've got a little bit, if you're just a little bit off from where you cut your paper, I had that little sliver. I just want to even everything up. And I can tell here I did not get this on as straight as I could have or should have. So I'm going to, again, really quick, just trim that off. You don't really see this one down here, so I'm not going to worry about it. I hope I'm not confusing you guys flipping that around. Okay, so I glued the 7 by 7 inch panels that were created when we scored and folded our paper together. So now we have the beginning of our folio. So I'm going to open it up and the next thing we're going to do is we are going to install these two flaps. So I'm going to install the one that flops down first. So this piece is made from one of the off cuts when you cut your paper uh, your 12 by 12 paper, cut it at seven inches so that you have a seven by 12 inch piece. You're left with a five by 12 inch piece right here. And we are going to use this to make this flip down right here. Okay. Now, Again, you can look at your patterns of your papers and decide which one you want to use. But I have already cut some of my papers, I believe. Let's see, I think I have another one here. Nope, I think I may have already cut mine up. You're gonna eventually cut these up and use them, but you, again, I would wait. I, I cut to pr prepare for my video, but when I made this one, I cut the paper, I decided which I wanted to be the front, then I made my flaps, then I made my pockets, and I did all of that. And you may want to, again, have those measurements there, but wait to cut your papers until you are ready. <laughs> to, and you picked out your designs, I guess is the way to say that. All right, but pick one of the leftover pieces that measures five by 12. It was very wordy of me, I apologize. 
And this piece, we are going to score it on that 12 inch side, again at five inches. Now, if yours, I don't know if again was the right word, but if yours has some direction to it, you may want to think about this before you score it. But this is going to make the flap and the side load pocket on the back panel. And I'm going to have to decide what orientation or wh which, which pattern I want. It's going to be installed like this so we can have a whole lot of busy going on and we can always add some other papers to help with that. But it's going to flip down this way or I could install it like this and flip down this way. All right. Which do I want? Always a decision to be made, right? I'm going to install it this way just for funsies. Okay, this is going to be a side load pocket. It's going to load. I'm putting, I'm going to adhere it so that it loads right to left. So it is important that we don't get confused and we hold the paper. I want to leave this side open. Okay, so I'm going to hold, I'm going to turn it over and hold my paper by this side and I'm going to add glue to these three sides and then we are going to lay it down right here. And you want to make sure everything fits in this panel. So you just want to be careful. All right, so I've got it folded up and I'm adding the glue to these three sides. Okay, and I'm going not quite to where it folds because I want to have plenty of room. You know, I don't want it to get on top of the fold and open it up now. And if we did this correctly, we have a nice flip piece, right? And we have a delightful side load pocket, and we do. Okay, we're gonna let that glue dry. So we're gonna now make the piece that is the top flip. So this piece is, you take one of the other pieces that ended up being five inches by 12 inches when you cut your 12 inch paper, and you're gonna cut it at six and a half inches on the 12 inch side, because what you need is a piece that is six and a half by five. And this is going to end up being the top flap. And again, we're just going to look at our papers and our colors and decide which way we want it to go. Now, I am going to score this one. And again, I don't have a direction to mine. It doesn't have the Santas or anything. And we are going to score this one at one inch. So, one inch on the six and a half inch side, which is gonna leave us with a lovely flap. And I have not yet decided which color of my pattern paper I want to the front. Probably this burgundy, because it kind of coordinates. Now, you, you, you have a choice. The way I installed the one on my prototype as I installed the flap, I added glue here, just put it right along the top and within this crease line and went to the right this time instead of the left. I didn't center these. You could center them, I guess. If you center them, you don't get as much room for your pocket, but. Or you can hook it around the back and glue it like this. I just didn't really wanna see this flap back here. So I'm gonna do mine the way I did the prototype, which, is add glue to this panel, and then it's going to lay right here. And I'm not inking these creases for you guys because I'm not inking this project. Isn't that, are, are you guys shocked? <laughs> yes, it is really me, it is really Pam, but I decided this, this paper was so pretty and I wasn't gonna grunge it up this time. It's just a little bit different look for me. But it's gonna sit just a little past where this is scored 
um, and, and to the right, this one I installed to the left. We're just gonna glue this little panel down. So add your adhesive. And get it up in there. And I'm trying to come pretty much right to the top. All right. I think it's looking good. So far, so good, right? I just love these papers. I'm having a lot of fun this year working with them. Okay. So we have a flap, a flap, a flap, a flap. And we are about in business. Now we're going to install some pockets. I'm going to round some of these corners. And it's going to just start looking fabulous. So I'm going to use the half inch corner round. And I'm going to, again, do this one the way I did the prototype. I'm going to round the corners of my front cover here. And I'm going to round the ones on this corner as well. And if you want to do these, you could. I'm just not so you know you can skip rounding the corners all together if you want to all right and i'm going to round the corners on both of these flaps make sure you give yours time to dry before you start yanking it around like i am i think mine's okay but you don't want it to fall apart on you all right i'm gonna set that aside and I'm really, really happy with it. Again, now we're just gonna have some fun decorating. So let's do the cover first. I did a very simple ribbon closure. I've shown you guys this before, but I'll show you again where I just picked a tag, I layered it, and then I layered some seam binding underneath and I'm tying it to the left. I did layer just for decoration some papers here. I guess I could have made that another little pocket right here, couldn't I? Um, and a sticker. So again, depending on your papers, if you feel like you want a little more or a strip of something, feel free. Let me, I've cut, I didn't even cut all of the little tags and cards out, but I did cut quite a few. So I'm gonna see if something strikes me for the front of this. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. That one's kind of cute. All right, so far I'm liking that one. Ooh, this one's pretty. It brings the floral in. That might be it. There's Santa. He looks good there too. All right, those two I like. I'm not sure about the square. The square works, but I, I'm liking the rectangle. I think for the size. Okay, and then I've got squares and I have some of the great big large triangles. So let's find a piece to layer. I have a piece of, these are the little lanterns that were in this one and then this plaid. I wonder what this plaid would look like. Since it's the right size, we may just go for it. <laughs> we may just, you know, make our life easy and do that thinking with the plaid there, the Santa better or the florals? I know y'all are probably telepathically trying to tell me what looks the best. Let's do the floral. That was the one that caught my eye the first time. And we're just gonna stay with it. I do want to round these corners really quick. So you can use, for the closure, again, I'm probably gonna use some seam binding. We'll see if I have enough left that I've already dyed. Uh, you can use ribbon, yarn, twine, whatever. You don't even have to really have a closure, I guess, if you don't want one. I just think it gives it a little bit of an extra. You could do some kind of um, tabbed closure if you wanted to that then unhooks. So you could do a button and some string, you know, so many choices. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is glue this card to this piece here so that I get it lined up nicely. And then we will look at our ribbon options. So if you're gonna make one, leave me a comment, let me know. I would love, love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. Give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. And 
I, I think I've mentioned I'm part of the Rach and Bella collaboration this year, and I've posted that a few times in the community tab and on my other social, on YouTube and then my other social media. But if you haven't been checking out the videos already, you should. There's um, gonna be so many fun giveaways too, uh, donated by the YouTubers that are in the collaboration. So that's anywhere, anything from my digital papers to actual things being mailed. I'm donating a set of Christmas tree tags made by me that'll be shipped anywhere in the world. So um, there's the rules about how you get into the, you know, the giveaway and all of that. There's a Facebook group, so much. So I'll make sure even in this video, I link Rach and Bella's website so you can go look at all of that if you haven't already gotten involved. Okay, so the way I do this is I go ahead and lay my ribbon down and think, look to see how much I'm gonna need on this side to tie it closed. I think that's plenty, probably even a little more than what I need. And then I wrap this piece around this way. I'm gonna have to dye some more ribbon soon. And then cut it off where I think I have enough. Okay, super easy. And I'll just kind of pull it so that it's somewhat even. And I'm gonna grab some two-sided tape. Get this about where I want it, just to help hold that ribbon secure underneath. And then we're gonna lay down a lot of glue. <laughs> okay, so that's about where I want the ribbon. Eyeballing this, you can, if you're nervous, you could mark it, you know, get your ruler out and mark where you wanna put it so that you know that it's centered. I like to get the seam binding nice and flat where I'm gonna glue it underneath my tag. And you know, you could add eyelets that are brads, you could add sparkle, glitter. I mean, you could just, again, just because I'm not doing all the extras every time, have fun, it's a Christmas project. I am already thinking about the video I'm gonna do for my collaboration video for Rach and Bella, which I hope you guys will come watch. Um, and I definitely, I think I'm gonna pull out the glitter. So I'm a little excited, we'll see. I say that now and I'll be like, Pam, where's the glitter? If I don't. All right, let's make sure. Hopefully I didn't cut this too short. I think we're okay. The seam binding is just so easy to work with that I really enjoy it. Yep, super cute, right? All right, and I like all the different shades of green. And for right now, I'm gonna leave this panel. Um, you certainly could add that vertical strip like I did for decoration. You could add a pocket there, but I'm gonna leave it for now. I, I like how it's looking. Now on this piece, I'm gonna pick one of the cards to just add a decoration. And I used one of the square ones. Again, I think the, I'll give you a measurement in case you don't have the paper kit. These are four by four inch squares and they just fit on this panel really nicely. Remember, this is a five inch wide. So, do I want Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night? I kinda like this home for the holidays one. I don't know, I like all of them. That's part of the problem. I think I'm gonna do this package. Don't peek until Christmas. I changed my mind, I just went all the, I went all the way around. Now, I glued mine down last time before I rounded these corners. I think it still looks okay, but I'm gonna round them since I'm thinking about it this time. Lots of corner rounding today. I probably need to dump this. Okay. And it's gonna go right here. Now I did add some of the fun, uh, and thank you, I, I can't remember who it was that told me this is called eyelash ribbon. The green is a little off, but I'm using it and I think it looks good once it gets on here. Um, on the other one, I went ahead and glued it down and then just used a glue dot to stick some. I think on this one, I am going to, again, I'm kinda just going for it. I'm gonna get a little slot. You could use a circle if you don't have the slot punch. And I'm gonna do a strand of each, you know, just to be fancy like that. I think this green has 
more eyelashes <laughs> than the white. Um, it just seems a little bit thicker. The, the yarn that it's on feels to be the same, kind of the same thickness, but it just seems to have a little more of the, the frizz or the fray, we'll see. I think it'll look cute. I'm just gonna loop it through. And I'm gonna, for right now, I'm gonna leave it long because I like having the extra fluff. And now we're gonna glue the tag down. Look at those pretty Christmas trees in the back of these tags. I love that. I wish there was one of the papers in the kit was just those trees. And of course, I know I could use that side. This is always the problem with these beautiful kits is I'm always like, but I want to use the tags, but, but, but I want to use the Christmas trees and then I never know what to do. So sometimes I just have to force myself to just stick it down and keep on going. All right, so what's fun about that is we're gonna have this fuzz. It's a little long, I'll give it a haircut, but we're gonna have that kind of sticking out or flipping inside, flipping inside, not flipping. <laughs> Okay, cute, yeah, being a little bit shorter is perfect. Okay, just gonna flip that one up. Now, I have, I'll have this in the measurements, the pocket that is going to be installed here. I've already cut it, I believe I cut it. Did I? Um, I don't think I did. I need, it's a two, one is a two inch by six and seven eighths and then the other one is I did one and a half so I did one here where did I do the other one? Oh, that was the one on the front this piece was one and a half so this is a two inch by you can do like six and three quarters or six and seven eighths to get it to sit on this seven inch panel look I didn't put anything on this flap guys we could do so much more I just left that one blank and plain. We're gonna have to remedy that, aren't we? Wait, it's not, it's not blank and plain. I'm losing my mind. I've been crafting for too many hours straight today. This is the one <laughs> that is the finished folio. The blank plain one is the one we're working on right now. Okay, you need a strip of paper that is two inches by six and seven eighths. And I am going to look at my patterns. I think I'll use this one and kind of have that green here for when that flips open. La -da -da. No, I'm not because I'm putting it here. Where, what do I want here? I think the green will still look okay there. I will be right back. I'm running over. I... A little trim again I'll have all this listed for you in the description so you won't have to wonder what you're doing now I have to decide do I want this pocket to have the red or the green polka dots doo, doo, doo. I don't know you know what before we decide what I've already picked out the paper that is going to be the triangle pockets so we have a triangle pocket on either side and then we have one up at the top. And then I did a small vertical pocket and that's the one I remembered to cut the paper. It's gonna be the Santas up at the top. So there's just so many choices with this paper. Um, again, on one of the pieces that you cut this a 12 by 12 and you cut it at seven inches. I told you you're gonna have three of those that you were gonna cut that way. Two are the main folio. The other one is so that you have all of these pieces. One of the five by 12 inch strips, you're gonna cut into, you're gonna cut it at five inches, you're gonna cut it again at five inches, and you'll end up with two five by five squares, and then one two inch by five inch strip, and this two inch by five inch strip is gonna be the pocket up here. And then you're gonna take the five by five inch squares and cut them just on the diagonal to make your triangle pockets. 
and I have the other one right here. Now, again, I'll have to decide, do I wanna see the Santas? Do I want to see the plaid or a combination? This has a direction to it and I intentionally cut this one so I could have the Santas on this maroon panel because I'm not gonna to wanna to do Santas and Santas over here and I can use the plaid on this side. And it doesn't matter if the Santas are upside down. On this piece, we're gonna use one of these triangles for our triangle pocket. And if I wanna use the Santas, I just need to pick one that have, has the correct orientation or I can just use the plaid. All right, so I know I wanna do plaid on this side, Santa on this side. Hmm. On the other one, I did the angle to the other side, but it really doesn't matter. I think I'm gonna put the Santas here. This is just extra paper that you'll have. All right, so again, I hope I haven't confused you, but all of these pieces are coming from those three original 12 by 12 pieces of paper. And I may have only talked about two because I was talking about the main part of the folio, but I said approximately three pieces of 12 by 12 paper. All right, let's install this one first. It's just like we always do a triangle pocket and I'm gonna add glue to the two sides, holding it by the side I wanna keep open, which is on this case, the angle. Gotta really get it in there or you'll have to trim off the corner. Okay, now it's kind of a top load and what's nice is when you go to fold it up, it isn't gonna fly out because this is the bottom or the top ends up kind of being the bottom. Okay, on these, I am going to round these corners so that they match up. Around the corner. And we're gonna install these two. And again, if you don't have this paper kit or one you know, with all the extras, again, just get out three pieces of 12 by 12 paper that you think look pretty together and you're gonna be able to make this. You could even do like solid card stock and then layer book page or, or other papers on top. There's again, lots of options. One of the things I am already thinking about for next year, for 2025, is digging back through a bunch of the old um, vintage books that I got on that vintage book haul. If you haven't seen me talk about that, you can go back to some of my old videos. Um, my husband and I one day did a crazy, I said, I did a thing. And we filled up most of his pickup truck with old books. So I have lots of fun books to play with. And I go through stages where I spend more time playing with them than others. Okay, I think I've got to decide here. I said Santas. We've got Santa, 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 and I only have one plaid. So maybe I'll do the plaid here. Now let's again make the decision about this piece. I'm gonna go with the green and then maybe decorate it a little bit. Again, we've got it round one of the corners. Um, because it, it coordinates here. It's a little bit odd because I don't have much of it in the folio, so I think this will help a little. So side load pocket, I'm holding it by the side I want to keep open little bit of glue and I only rounded the one corner because I haven't down here is a straight corner okay well, well we'll do something to decorate this that'll help I think all right and now again I've got my crease right here so we got to be careful when we lay this in I need to round a corner looking one more time I'm gonna go with the plaid so we bring a little more of the plaid to the inside. And this is only five inches, and I think this piece is five and a half, so, but it fits in fine. It's just a little bit smaller. Okay. 
Okay. Bring it up to the top a touch more. All right, I'm gonna let that stick down. I think we have installed all of our pockets. We're looking good. We may have to put a little bit of eyelash there. I don't know, we'll see. I like having it here. Okay, I'm gonna get out the sticker sheet. And this is also, I'm looking at this plaid. This plaid might be a fun choice to layer, to bring a little bit here. Let's see what we have on the stickers. So we also have these. See what it looks like with that. I think just putting the little Christmas banner right here will be cute. It'll kind of break that up some. There we go. I just made a decision. I got Christmas and Christmas. We have Christmas everywhere. It's all right. And then when we start filling our pockets, again, I can grab some stickers for things that look a little plain. I'm going to put a piano right there just because I can like why not right maybe a sticker here maybe this wreath I just love stickers oh I thought the wreath was going to be cut out and not be solid white there hmm hmm where do I want to put this wasn't what I was expecting I guess I'm going to come put it here on the plaid where I had originally said okay and what I love about this pocket is some of these larger journaling cards will fit in there. Put one of these here. I'm just kind of, I and I did this with the other one, I just kind of went through and started filling in the pockets and then decided what I wanted to add ribbon and other, other pretties to. And they definitely will hold more than um, just just one card. I was trying to find, I wanted one this size to slide in here. It's kind of getting lost with all the pattern. So I think I'll put this one here. And we could have done a little notch on this pocket. But it's okay. I want. I definitely want to probably glue one of the cards here to break that up a little bit. Maybe even Santa. Yeah, we'll just center Santa right there because we can. So a little bit of glue. Don't need a lot because it's not a pocket or anything. I'm just gonna put him right there. And this again, this is going to be a great gift for somebody that maybe needs some, some journaling cards or you want to give them some cards that they can use as gift tags, that kind of thing. Ooh, this green one's kind of fun. Jingle all the way. second one in there. I'm just kind of going through now and just filling it up. Now I will, uh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I am sure that I am going to go back through here and add a lot of the ribbons and extras like I did on my original, but I don't think I'm going to do it right now. Um, I think we've probably been crafting together long enough, so we will set this aside. And I still have lots of pieces in this kit and pages that I haven't even cut yet. So lots more crafting to be done with the It's a Wonderful Christmas kit. I hope you like this. Again, please let me know. Now I have two. This one just needs to be decorated a touch more. And I have two lovely folios made. All right, y'all have a great day. Until next time.